Happy Spyro Community Day! Let's unleash the dragon with a rankings list of all the mainline console games from the Spyro franchise. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a brand new Spyro video. If you're not aware, we are currently celebrating a Spyro Community Day today on the 4th of June 2021. We are trying to get Spyro trending with the hashtag Unleash the Dragon. So if you want to join in, head over to your favorite social media account and share a post with the hashtag Unleash the Dragon. Whether it be your art, a screenshot, story, review, it doesn't matter as long as it's related to Spyro. Anyway, let's get into the video. Spyro has had his own fair share of being in the spotlight. From games that are considered amazing classics to examples of blunders, Spyro has had his fair share of highs and lows. In today's video, to celebrate the Purple Boy, I'll be ranking the games in order, from best to worst. Now these are my own personal rankings and does not obviously reflect everybody as a whole. These are just my personal rankings. Now there are a few rules here. Spyro Reignited is excluded from this list because it would simply not be fair. You could just throw that game at the number one spot because it includes the entire trilogy into one package, so it's not really fair. I also have excluded the Skylanders franchise from the list. The reason being is A, I don't have enough experience with Skylanders to make a fair decision, and B, it's a hotly debated topic whether or not Skylanders is considered as mainline Spyro titles or spin-offs. Either or, for this video specifically, they have been excluded. Now if you don't know, I already made a video just like this, except for Crash Bandicoot. If you're interested, check it out in the card in the top right corner. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Number 1 This one is a debate for the century. Which three of the original games takes the first spot? Well, each game has their high points in terms of quality. It can be very, very hard to pinpoint which one comes out on top. Now I had to sit down and replay these games again to really get my final thoughts locked down, and it was not easy. But ultimately, by the skin of its teeth, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, or Gateway to Glimmer if you're in the UK, takes my number one spot. While it doesn't have the best collectibles in the series, and the level pacing is a bit long in the tooth at times, what came down to it claiming the top spot is the introduction of Tom Kenny as Spyro, it having the best cast of characters, the best villain, but overall having some of the best levels in the entirety of the series. It is also home to only one level that I actually strongly dislike in the Spyro franchise, and that is Robotica Farms. For the very hard choice of number one, it goes to Spyro 2. Number two. Spyro the Dragon. Yeah, I know, this one's a bit of a shock for me too. For years, it was always an internal struggle between which game was the best, Spyro 2 or Spyro 3. But recently, playing through all the games again, Honestly, I fell back in love with Spyro 1. Spyro 1 was where it all started for me. It was my very first console game that I ever owned and that holds a very special place in my heart. But not only that, but Spyro 1's soundtrack is the best in the entire series. It also has the best collectibles ever, dragons. Finding each and every crystallized dragon was such a satisfying feeling to have. Rescuing the dragons also had Spyro talking and really expressing a lot more than in comparison to the other games. The level designs are unique and most levels are really solid. I've grown to really appreciate Spyro 1 more than I did before, and that is why it takes the second spot on the list. Number 3 Spyro 3, You're the Dragon Spyro 3 is great. It does many things right. The baby dragons are super cute, the side playable characters are amazing, and the platforming is well tuned and tightened. It's an excellent game overall. But what made it fall to the third spot? Well, the biggest factor for me 
is the level designs. There are some levels overall that just feel really flat, whether it be the level's aesthetic or the actual design of the level. Also, Spyro 3's music soundtrack overall is the least appealing of the original three games. Shockingly, some music tracks even go as far as being outright annoying, like Desert Ruins. While Spyro 3 is still amazing, this is the reason why it doesn't score quite as high as the other two in the trilogy. Number 4 The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. Some of you might be shocked to see this game this high on the list, but here it is. This was the attempted reboot of the series back in 2006. While I have made my voice very clear that I was not the biggest fan of the Legend of Spyro series, I did actually enjoy A New Beginning. The use of the different elemental breaths is very fun at times, and even though the genre was shifted to a bit more of a beat-em-up more than anything, there's still lots of platforming and challenge to be had, and even diverse levels. Now, yes, Spyro was voiced by Frodo Baggins, and the origin story is like Harry Potter featuring Joe Dirt. There's still fun to be found here. Number 5 This is where we enter the land of bland for me. Bland doesn't mean bad. It's just, you know, bland. Fighting for the 5th and 6th spot it's Spyro A Hero's Tale and Dawn of the Dragon. Spyro A Hero's Tale is an attempted continuation of the formula from the original Spyro trilogy, and Dawn of the Dragon is the take that is the most different in the entire series. Spyro's Hero's Tale feels like a more polished, mechanic-wise twin sanity with boring writing. Gems are now more used for currency to buy items from the Russian mob, I mean money bags, and you go through the overworld trying to stop Red. Yes, the villain's name is Red, because he's... he's a red dragon. Red placed dark crystals to corrupt the land. Destroy said dark crystals, defeat Red, and you win. This is also the Spyro game where Jess Harnell voiced Spyro. Wow, a million brain cells? That seems excessively destructive. Uh, that seems kind of bad. Okay, okay, it's cool. Now, Dawn of the Dragon is the end of the Legend of Spyro series. Spyro goes through another redesign, again, gets paired up with Cinder, whose personality is as deep as a single dehydrated prune, and you fly around to stop Malifor from destroying the world. The gameplay is nothing like the Spyro franchise has ever seen before, as it basically takes all the platforming aspects of the game and fires it out the window with its flying mechanic. Notice how I'm saying flying, because the actual flying in the game limits you greatly and it just causes frustration. The game almost feels like a kid-friendly god of war, and there's almost no trace of Spyro's original DNA anywhere. Both of these games hit differently for me. Some aspects of them are okay, others are not great, but for the number 5 spot, I gotta give it to a hero's tale. Hero's Tale brings some classic aspects of Spyro to the table, while Dawn of the Dragon changes so much that if you were to swap out Spyro for any other dragon, you would never know that this was a Spyro game. Also, Dawn of the Dragon gets smushed down to 6 because of the butcher job that they did to Mark Hamill's voice as Malifor. You've been told that I was the first of our kind, but I assure you, there have been many. Yep, did you recognize that was him? Nope, neither did I. So, uh, yeah, that's why you get the sixth spot, sport. Now, that means there are two spots left. These are the worst Spyro games. The infamous Spyro Enter the Dragonfly and The Legend of Spyro Eternal Night. I have made my stance on Enter the Dragonfly very, very clear. I hate it. This is, performance-wise, the worst game that has come out for Spyro. It's a buggy, broken mess that's barely holding together with bubblegum and tape. The development for this game was not entirely the developer's fault, as Universal just could not decide what they wanted in a game, while also not changing the release date for the devs. The game is a hodgepodge mess overall. Also, if you disagree with me, that's okay, but you should also know that Enter the Dragonfly is the reason why Stuart Copeland quit Spyro. 
I'm not joking, he quit because of Enter the Dragonfly. On a one-on-one -on -one interview, he talked about his work on Enter the Dragonfly and why he left. That decision of him leaving came from him looking at some of the marketing material for Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, and this commercial came up. Copeland literally said, nope, I'm done, and walked away from Spyro entirely. He only came back because of the Spyro Reignited trilogy. But now we go to Eternal Suffering, I mean Eternal Night. Spyro Eternal Night is just pain. That's the, just the best way to describe it, is just pain. They took the combat from a new beginning, which was fun, and just removed the iframes so that you can just get stacked on and pummeled to death. Then, they somehow took the elemental breaths and somehow made them, how do I put it lightly, terrible. I don't know how, but they made them awful. Oh, but they were not done. They took the small potential aspect of a story for Cinder and they threw it in the trash. Also, I hope you like pirate ships, because that's where you're going to be for 60% of the game. Also, the one thing, the one thing that holds you in this game is this dragon called the Chronicler. He is this whimsical spectral dragon that comes to Spyro in his dreams and gives him visions. He helps him rediscover his power while also asking Spyro to search for him. Finally, when you leave the pirate ship Purgatory, you encounter him in person. And this is basically how the conversation goes. Hello, Spyro. I am the Chronicler. I like to read books. This book talks about you, Spyro. Oh, cool. What does it say? Uh, the wise text says, uh, uh, stop simping for Cinder. You can't tell me what to do. I'm leaving. Okay, bye. I like books. It is the most underperforming, underwhelming buildup I have ever seen in a game in a long time. And it physically hurts. So the question becomes, who gets last place? Who and what is the worst Spyro game? The answer is, shockingly, Eternal Night. While Enter the Dragonfly is bad, there is entertainment to the bad. The bugs and glitches actually adds entertainment to the game and the music itself isn't half bad, and the game is relatively short. So while it does suck, I can play it ironically. Eternal Suffering though, I literally cannot ever see myself playing the game ever again. It's one of the most painful, insufferable games I've played in a long time. And funny enough, when you compare the Metacritic score of Enter the Dragonfly to Eternal Night, Eternal Night scores lower overall. I said I would play Enter the Dragonfly again if we hit 100,000 subscribers, but Eternal Night, I would need to hit a million. It's, it's that bad. And that is my Spyro rankings list. Did you agree? Did you disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.